Hey guys, welcome to another book review. Um, it's been a while since I have been able to post. I'm a little behind, sorry about that. Uh, but I was determined to make sure that this video got posted before the actual Halloween holiday because this is like the number one book I think of when I think of spooky season um, and it's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So obviously written by a woman, not incredibly common for the time when this book came out. Um, and this book was actually, you know, pretty, pretty popular. It scared the hell out of people, which honestly, nowadays is probably not going to scare anybody. It's not, it's not very scary. Like she doesn't even necessarily describe what the monster looks like really in the book. He's just called a creature. So you don't really see what he's or you can't you have to use your imagination quite a bit to think of like the most hideous being you could kind of think of like she kind of describes it but not like oh my god um and lots and lots of detail um so you know i i had a teacher that would always talk shit on this book he was basically like frankenstein is it's written by a woman. It's all about how women want to change a man or make the perfect man. After reading that book, I, I call bullshit. Um, cause Frankenstein wanted to create a man, but it wasn't in any way supposed to be perfect. Right? Like he, it wasn't supposed to be an attractive creation. Uh, Cause obviously that's not what happened. Um, so it's like, he just wanted to create life and then abandon it or something. Cause that's basically what he did. Like he makes this creature and then he's so terrified by what he's done. He just like ghosts the thing, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay. And then of, of course that pisses off the creature. And the next thing you know, the creature is like out for revenge. And it's like, well, no shit. What do you think was going to happen? Um, so I do have to say after reading the book, it's very different from a lot of the Hollywood movies I watched growing up regarding, you know, Frankenstein. Also the very traditional Hollywood scene that most people think of where it's like this mad scientist in a lab and it's raining and there's a castle and he's screaming like, it's alive, it's alive. That doesn't happen. Igor is not even in, in here. Like he doesn't have a little one-eyed hunchback, you know, apprentice or what, helper. That That's not in there. Um, so, I mean, it's basically just, you know, a guy who creates something with that being the end goal and not realizing the consequences of what he's done. Um, and then he spends the rest of the book just like trying to run away from what he's done and not necessarily own up to it and how that kind of destroys his life. Um, yeah, serious food for thought, right? I mean, even today, everything I just said, you can still relate to in, in present day, right? Like we're all terrified of making mistakes that we're not going to be able to get away from, you know, or creating something and then going like, Oh God, what I do, what I do. It's this, right? I mean, that's basically what happens in this book. Um, I, I would definitely say it's about 200, a little over 200 pages. So it's actually shorter than I thought it would be. Um, it's pretty fast and easy read. Um, I, I would say for classic literature, this was not something that was like super boring. It moves pretty fast. So I'll give it to Mary Shelley. She really keeps the pace going in this book. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, chapters or anything where you're like just reading about the countryside. It's not like that. Uh, she keeps the plot moving pretty quickly. And I do have to say, Mary Shelley herself was actually a pretty fascinating person and her relationship with Percy Shelley and their love story is also a pretty, um, is pretty gripping and it's pretty entertaining in itself. So even if you don't want to read Frankenstein, 
Um, I encourage you to learn more about the author and her relationship with her husband, but also her circle of people was actually pretty fascinating in itself. Um, like how she ended up thinking of this book was she was hanging out with her husband, uh, Percy. I, I can't recall if they were actually married at the time though, forgive me. And Lord Byron and his um, paramour, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's like your mistress, your girlfriend, but not, you know, not your wife, okay? So she was hanging out with them and they were, you know, tasked with entertaining each other and it was, you know, tell a spooky story and this is how she ended up getting the inspiration for what became Frankenstein. So it's, it's pretty interesting to get some background, not just about her, but the book. Also, her, her parentage was pretty fascinating. Um, so I would definitely say there is a whole element of like cool, interesting history stuff you could learn. The book itself moves pretty quickly. It's very, very entertaining. Um, again, short book at 200 pages-ish, you know, fast read. I can understand why some people were forced to read this in high school. Kind of wish I had been forced to read it. Um, cause there's a lot of layers to this book and that's, and that's another thing that's, you know, pretty interesting in classic literature, especially most of them have a lot of different layers, a lot of, um, pretty heavy themes that are still relevant to today. So I really encourage people to learn some more information about Mary Shelley. Her life was pretty fascinating. Also, read Frankenstein. I promise it's not scary. It's not going to scare you. But it will definitely keep you entertained. Okay? Till next time.